So forever I've been hearing this claim that CEO pay is unjustifiably high, that the reason is that CEOs have captured the boards of directors. The boards of directors are just basically puppets in the hands of the CEO, and the CEOs milk these boards for huge salaries, and uh, this is just perverse and unjust, and uh, shareholders are, are being screwed, but this is a problem. You know, all of us should care about this. So let me start by this. Who cares? Let's assume that this claim is somehow true, that by some measure that you could come up with, CEOs are paid too much. By whom? Is it coming out of my pocket? Am I paying them too much? Uh, if I'm paying them too much, why do you care? It's my money. Um, so, you know, who should care? Shareholders. Shareholders have the tools to modify this. They could fire the board of directors. They could fire the CEO. They can lower their pay. They, they have tools that make it possible to them to actually change this. To the extent they don't, to the extent that we really believe that shareholders are not able in the world we have today to have an influence on the board and therefore on, that is a consequence of regulation. And, and I agree, shareholders are not as strong and powerful as they should be and would be in a free market. There are all kinds of regulations. For example, uh, large financial institutions like banks, mutual funds, uh, hedge funds, insurance companies can't re can be represented on the board. They're not allowed to have board membership. They can't own large amounts of a, of a company. Uh, there's a drive among uh, corporate governance folks to try to get insiders, so-called insiders off boards of directors. Who counts as an insider? Well, Warren Buffett counts as an insider because if you own a lot of, like at Coca-Cola, he owns a lot of Coca-Cola stocks, so he's an insider. So we don't want Warren Buffett on the board of Coca-Cola. CalPERS, the big um, teachers union uh, pension plan here in California, was trying to get Warren Buffett off the board of Coca-Cola. But that's exactly who you want on the board of directors because he owns a lot of shares, so his incentives are aligned with whom? With other shareholders. So, okay, so if you want, if you think shareholders don't have enough power, then the solution is deregulate. Get government out of the business of telling shareholders what they can and cannot do. Who can be a shareholder? Who can sit on the board of directors? There's a, there's a mountain of regulations that started in 1933 and goes all the way through the 1990s, some of it at the state level, some of it at the federal level, that basically constrains the power of shareholders. And if you got rid of all of that and you left it up to private contract, uh, then a lot of this, a lot, whatever, whatever problems supposedly are there would go away. Okay, but then our CEOs paid too much. Is there any evidence to suggest that CEOs are bad companies, are paid, and CEOs of good companies don't get paid a lot, or there's some, there's no correlation between performance and pay. The answer simply is there's no evidence of that. All the evidence out there suggests that there's a high correlation between CEO performance and their pay. Uh, and I refer you here to primarily the, my favorite economist that does this kind of work is Stephen Kaplan from the University of Chicago. He's an excellent economist. He's a finance guy at the University of Chicago. Uh, and he has a number of articles about this. But what he shows, his research shows, that there's a strong correlation between CEO pay and CEO performance. Uh, CEOs who perform really, really well, and that's reflected in share price going up, have higher pay than CEOs that don't perform well. Indeed, CEOs that don't perform well get kicked out. Uh, turnover among CEOs is huge. CEOs are, uh, you know, are one of the, uh, your lifespan as a CEO, is probably the shortest of any profession. You know, most CEOs don't last more than five years because most CEOs don't do a good job and they get kicked out. Uh, so it's this huge turnover, which also suggests that boards are not in the pockets of CEOs because boards are quite easily willing to fire a CEO when they don't perform or when there's a problem in the company. So boards seem to act quite independently and there's plenty of evidence to suggest that they penalize CEO. Now, are they aberrations? Sure, they're always gonna be, you're always gonna find one story of one board of directors that's incompetent, doing a bad job. I blame shareholders, kick them out, throw them out, get together, organize. Again, to the extent you can't organize, it's because of regulations. Uh, Kaplan does a bunch of other research which I find interesting, probably a fact that most of you don't even know. But CEO pay, average CEO pay, has gone down by 50% from 2000, 2000, and I think his last numbers are 2009. 
So from 2000 to 2009, they went down. Now, a big part of that is because during the 1990s, many CEOs, most of their compensation was stock, stock options. And during the huge rise in the stock market, particularly in the NASDAQ over the 90s, they made a huge amount of money off of stock options. Now, that's good because that means shareholders were also making money. Stock market has gone down since then. And as a consequence, CEO pay has gone down dramatically. In general, we've gone through two recessions now, the early 2000s and the late 2000s. And as a consequence, companies are not performing as well. CEO pay has gone down. So CEO pay is down. You can see it in all, Kaplan has a bunch of graphs that show this. But there's another, but people look over a, a longer span. They say over the last 20 years, uh, the pay of CEOs has gone up by a huge amount relative to everybody else in the economy's pay. And Kaplan says, yes, that's true. But there are actually a number of groups whose pay has gone up even faster than CEOs. Athletes, uh, entertainers, whether uh, singers uh, or movie stars, hedge fund managers, uh, and CEOs of non-public companies, CEOs in the private equity market. And one of, one of the interesting things, just in terms of uh, performance, the relation between performance and CEO pay is that in the private equity, CEOs are paid higher than in the public markets. Private equity, there's only one owner, the private equity company, so they are very rigorous in terms of linking performance to compensation. So that suggests that publicly traded CEOs are not being overly compensated, certainly not relative to private markets. Okay, so, but athletes are, have been compensated at a faster rate. Uh, the other group was lawyers, uh, partners in law firms, uh, entertainers and so on. Um, so what's going on here? Uh, what, what Kaplan argues is that there's basically, with globalization, there's basically an enormous shortage of talent, supply and demand. There's a shortage of talent while the market for talent is not global. It's not just the U.S. and Europe. Now it's Asia. Uh, it, you know, it's, Europe has expanded to include Eastern Europe. It's Russia. Uh, so the market for talent has increased. And you can see that, for example, with basketball, right? Uh, Chinese are watching NBA, right? So they're now consuming the NBA. There's more demand for NBA talent. There's more revenue associated with the NBA. You can pay higher, you know, higher wages uh, for NBA players. And that's certainly true of CEOs. Now there's demand for American CEOs in Japan. There's demand in China. There's demand in all kinds of countries in Asia. There's demand in Europe and Eastern Europe and Russia for American talent. That drives up the price as long as the supply is not matching the demand, and it's not. Now, I think it will. That is, as China develops its own cadre of executives and talented people, as Eastern Europe develops its own cadre, supply will, over time, catch up with demand and you will actually see compensations coming down across the entire board. I mean, as for example, China, imagine China investing a lot of money or people in China investing a lot of money in training NBA, NBA players, training good basketball players. What will happen? Suddenly you get an influx of, of, of really talented Chinese players and maybe you'll even have a Chinese league in basketball. What will happen as a consequence? Actually, what will happen is, is you could see salaries going down you know, assuming that the market isn't growing at a higher, higher rate. Anyway, it's all supply and demand. Kaplan's argument is it's all supply and demand, and the supply has increased, demand hasn't matched it, and that's why. And that's why it's in all areas of talent, uh, this is the case. Uh, there's one caveat where I think Steve Kaplan doesn't quite get it, but where the Austrian economists really add, uh, add and this is why is there such an increase in compensation among uh, bankers, investment bankers, maybe hedge fund managers, people in the financial world. And here, there was a good editorial which we linked to at some point uh, from the Wall Street Journal, uh, where they talk about the fact that inflation benefits people on Wall Street, benefits financiers, in a way, and, and hurts everybody else in a sense. So what happens is the people who touch the money first when the Federal Reserve is inflating the money supply gain huge benefits from that. While everybody else, by the time the money kind of filters down through the economy, prices have gone up and they get no benefit from it. So you get an, uh, a worsening of, this, of the, of the uh, so-called income inequality, uh, at least in financial markets, 
because the financiers are the ones who touch the money first and because the Fed is creating all this money, they benefit from it. And there's a lot of truth to that. In, you know, so yes, so it's probably true that because of Federal Reserve policy, not because of anything evil or bad or weird that financiers are doing, but because of Federal Reserve policy, there is an added benefit to being in Wall Street. You, you can make more money. Um, I would also argue that another reason why they make more money is because in a complex globalizing capital markets, it's a talent argument. That talent of allocating capital, making good choices, making good investment is incredibly valuable. And this is why a lot of hedge fund guys make a lot of money. So it's hard to kind of isolate the different impacts. But I think, you know, I think uh, anybody concerned about CEO pay, I think, uh, would would uh, do well to read Stephen Kaplan's work, and we'll link to it, and uh, and to read some of the Austrian works about the impact of inflation on, on these kind of issues, and finding the right balance between how much of it is supply and demand and, and uh, premium for talent, and how much of it is caused by inflation. Uh, that's beyond the scope of what I can do, but uh, my suspicion is that for most people, it's primarily an issue of the premium for talent, supply and demand. Inflation primarily affects those in the financial industry. How much, I don't know.